In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can build your own custom RAG API that powers your Perplexity AI type application. If you've never used Perplexity before, Perplexity AI is basically an AI powered research and conversational search engine. Basically, think of it like an alternative to using Google to search for certain things, e.g., let's say I want to search for the top restaurants in Paris. So, as you can see, it basically gives me an AI summarized answer alongside the sources where um, those answers are gotten from. So I could literally click on any of the sources and I can just get, you know, a direct access to those restaurants. So as you can see, it's pretty much an AI powered Google and a step above using ChatGPT for your queries. And if you've used Perplexity AI before, you might be wondering how you can build an API that powers something like this. I'm going to be showing you that today. So to create an API that powers this, we need to have certain properties in the outputs of our JSON. So first of all, let's map out the JSON properties that we will be outputting from our API. So we have sources. Sources is basically going to be an array of source objects and each source object will have the favicon or the logo, the name of the page, then a link to basically open the page in a new tab. We would also have another property called answer. Answer is basically going to be the AI summarized answer, which is gotten from the sources. And we also have related, which is going to basically be queries related to our original query. So this is how I've laid them out. We're going to be having sources, which is basically an array of source objects. You have title, favicon, URL name. We should have answer, which is just a string. And we should have related queries, which is an array of strings. At the end of this video, this is basically what the outputs of our JSON will be looking like. We will have the answer, the array of strings, and the sources. So just before we jump into the code, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment below. I'll make sure to answer them. So let's get right into how you can build your own perplexity style RAG API. I have a very simple Node.js application here using Express and exposes a single endpoint, which is called slash search. I'm going to go through the search endpoint to explain further how this works. So we have the search function here. The first thing we do when a user makes a query is we basically have to get results from an actual search engine. In this case, I'm using the Brave Search API. You could use Google's API or any SERP API of your choice. So I'm subscribed to the free tier of the Brave Search API, which is quite reasonable for local testing, one request per second, 2000 requests per month. If you want to probably have more production ready API, the higher tiers are better. But for this example, you could either use this or you could use a Google search API. So I'm going to drop a link to Brave so that you can register and try it out yourself. So let's see what exactly the get set results does. So it makes a call to Brave API using the Brave API key, which you would get when you register and subscribe to a plan. We basically pass the query and we specify how many results we want returned in the search. So in this video, the example query we are going to be going with is what are the teams playing in the 2024 UCL final? So if you do not know what the UCL final is, it does not really matter for this video, but it's basically soccer or football, depending on what you call it. So the two teams playing in the final are actually Dortmund and Real Madrid. So ideally, the API response from the Brave Search API would return this URLs, which is the sources and certain other information. So this is what it looks like querying the API directly. We should get about five sources, which is what we'll be using in our application. As you can see, five different sources. I can find the documentation for the responses on the dashboard, basically the API dashboard. So this is what we care about in our case, the results, the search results, and they come with the URL and some other important fields the title, the URL, also the image, which would represent in our case, the icon of the source. So once we get the top five search results from the Brave Search API, we would have to extract the context from the result with RAG. If you are not familiar with RAG, I made a video very recently that you can check out that can give you more context on what RAG is. RAG is basically retrieval augmented generation. So the idea is basically to augment our prompts with the relevant context. The relevant context in this scenario is whatever will help the LLM answer the user's query in the best possible way. In our extract context result with RAG, we have a get relevant context function, which collects the user's query and the source. Source in this case is basically the search results. 
so each source has a url so what we are doing in this line here is basically to scrape the url that that means we are visiting the url to fetch the content of that page so if i go to this code you see how we do that basically use access to fetch we have a timeout here which is very important because the website might be down then once we get the relevant text data from the website, we convert it from HTML to text, which is done by this library here, HTML to text library. This way we return the actual text to content. So content now has the text from that particular website. Then we use something from Langchain, which is the recursive character text splitter to split the content into chunks. We define the chunk size and the chunk overlap. So once we split the text into chunks, we use an in-memory vector store. So in theory, you could replace this with an external vector store like PG vector, just like I had in my previous video, or you could use pinecone. So in this case, there's no real need to store it in our database. So we've decided to go with an in-memory vector store. And this memory vector store is provided to us by Langchain. So Langchain provides this popular memory vector store. So to basically create the store, we have to split specify what should be embedded in the store. So we pass in the chunks, that is what we've already split here. Then we could have like metadata here, but we've decided to go with an empty object. No metadata needs to be apparent to our chunks in this case. Then we are using the OpenAI embeddings model. So by default, this is also from Langchain and Langchain would use the latest OpenAI embedding model to basically embed the chunks into vectors. So in theory, you could replace this embedding model with whatever embedding model you want to use. In this case, we're going to be using OpenAI's embedding model. So the next line here is basically doing a similarity search between the user's query and whatever we have in the vector store. So once we find the results, we are basically returning the source and the content. Source here is basically the URL, just so that the LLM knows from which source they did get this result from. In scenarios whereby we want to attribute the source in our answer. So once we've gotten relevant context, yeah, we're just iterating over the search results to create relevant context for each of the sources. And we use promise.all settled here rather than promise.all because we do not want a failure of any of the promises to affect the entire process. Basically, because for instance, if there's a timeout, we don't want it to affect the other running processes, basically. So once we get the results, we filter for only the results that have status that have been fulfilled and we clean the text. That means we clean the value that's gotten from the relevant context. I'll show you what that looks like. So what we just do is we trim and we replace all the spaces and new lines with a single space. This is important in order to make sure whatever we are injecting into our prompt is efficient, especially in regards to token usage. As you know, there's a limit to how much we can pass to a prompt, depending on the context of whatever model we're using. So once we've extracted the results with RAG, we now have a context. And there are two things we do in this next line, which is we try to get the answer. I'm going to show you what get answer looks like. So get answer is basically making a request to GPT 4.0, which is the latest GPT 4 model, to get the answer for the user's query. What we pass in is the context, which is the context we got from the previous step, and the user's query, then we tell it to answer in detail. The system prompt is basically reminding it what it is, which is an AI chatbot powered research and conversational search and then blah, blah, blah. We set the temperature to 0 0.5 just for moderate creativity. And we basically return the result of that prompt. At the same time, we also try and get related queries. So related queries is basically a simple request to GPT 3.5 Turbo to get related queries to our user's query. So as you can see, we have a system prompt telling it that it's an expert tax with getting related search queries and it should output as a JSON array of strings. We also specify the response format as a JSON object. Yeah, we make sure it returns five related search queries. So in theory, we could have made this request sequentially rather than concurrently using promise.all. But because the two requests do not necessarily depend on themselves, it makes sense to do it this way to basically speed up the entire API. So once we get the answer and the related queries, we return it as a JSON object. So we have answer, we have related queries. And for sources, we basically use what we got from the search results from Brave API and map it into title, URL, icon, and name. So let me run this and show you the result of this. 
So if you remember, our search query is who are the teams playing in the 2024 UCL final? So ideally, we should get a response saying Real Madrid and Dortmund. As you can see, it says the Champions League final will be contested between German club Borussia Dortmund and Spanish club Real Madrid. So it answers this in detail as requested. We also have related search queries, which is 2024 title contenders, 2024 UCL finalists and some other queries. Then we have sources which is the title, the URL, the icon, and the name. These are source objects. So as you can see, in very simple steps, we've satisfied our goal of replicating a perplexity style RAG API. And that's pretty much how you can build your own perplexity AI style API. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It helps motivate me to keep making more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.